1590 Clean and Rouge Drive is the office of Mark Lee. He's a chiropractor here in Cleveland, and he's joining us here today, and it's going to be a good discussion. We're going to find out all about chiropractic. People really shrink with age. Uh, they do, yeah. Uh, sometimes about two inches, even. You know, as much more. as two inches, they do. Right? And, and what is it? Do they keep shrinking over the years, or does? I know that usually people get to their maximum height at what twenty-one or twenty-two, something like that. Well, uh, between eighteen to twenty-five, somewhere 25. in that range, right there. So, yeah. and then, and then. When do they get as short as they're going to get, or does it just keep going? Uh, it keeps going. You know, I mean, there's there's a point where you know, 70s and 80s is going to stop. You know, at some point. But mm -hmm. um, but the reason that they shrink, people all of us shrink is because the disc height loses its water. Basically, is the easiest way of thinking about it. So over time, it just we just get smaller and smaller with that. Whenever you read a story in the newspaper or see something on television about somebody getting arrested, you naturally assume they're guilty. Unless the story's about you or someone you love, then you'll think differently. And you'll want a lawyer, a lawyer who will defend you. My name's Scott Canavis. If you or someone you love has been charged with a crime, call me. I'll return your phone calls, I'll work on your case, and I will defend you. I do a stretching in the mornings and touch my toes, and it's supposed to stretch your spine. Does that help yes. slow down the shrink, the shrinking? Well, it's going to help you overall, but it's, but it's, you're still going to shrink, you know. But but motion is important, you know. Bodies was designed to be in motion, so if it's not going to stay in motion, it's gonna it's going to deteriorate. So, so so is there anything you can inject into your spine to make it to keep its thickness? No. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's artificial disc now, um, but you wouldn't want to put your entire spine as an artificial disc. But, you know, they can replace one disc here and there in the neck or in the lower back, but there's not really anything that would make you, you know, keep you from shrinking other than movement. Like a sedentary lifestyle, if you were to sit at a desk all day, mm -hmm. that is one of the worst things you can do, you know, as far as overall health, mm -hmm. but it's why you got to have motion. That's the old. That's the old saying. In uh, uh, the more you do, the more you do. Right. The more you're active, the more your body's active. I guess. Right. Well, yeah. That's why a good way to look at it. Right. But uh, well, I hate to think I'm gonna get any shorter. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be too do, much. Do but... some people not get that much shorter? Just kind of about get everybody. Maybe you know? hydration mm -hmm. is is oh, the it's key. important too. Right. We we have to get the right amount of water to make sure that it's you know going to hold. Does your does your uh, the 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 disc lose their ability to accept water or anything that make would well, make that's it kinda, shrink? Well, that's kind of part of the process too, is oh. you know, not being able to rehydrate the disc over time and uh -huh. stuff. So um, hydration again is right. a key, isn't it? Well, that's a big part of it. You know, we we sure most of us don't. Uh, I talk to my patients all the time, and uh, just very few people get enough water. You know, it's just it's just a hard. Now it's getting better. There's, you know, with our <clears throat> some of the new generation, we, we're more prone to do better. Yeah. You know, so, but um, you know, 64 ounces a day minimum, or you we used to say half your body weight in ounces. So if somebody weighed 200 pounds, at least 100 pounds, 100 ounces of water. But that's a lot too. But that's a lot. That make lot you water. pee a lot. Wouldn't it, it would. Yes. Or do you get? I've noticed the more water I drink, the more I pee. But after a while. It, it's like I don't. It, yeah. It's like I your can drink more. You get accustomed yeah. to body uh, <clears throat> retaining the water, I guess. Right. Well, your kidney's going to adapt too, you know, to somewhat. So yeah. Um, Does do you think the 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 alignment? I'm sure is. Can you see somebody walking around? And you say, "Boy, they need an alignment," but you can't say nothing. Well, it's it's a bad habit of mine. Yes, uh, you know, I, um, 
people come in all the time and, and, and they'll have a shoulder high or a, a hip high and I can see it right off the bat and I, I'm standing in the line at the grocery store or, or wherever, you know, you can see, mm-hmm. see those things, but most people don't notice it unless they're really bad, but I have, a, I do, but. And I wouldn't you know. notice, see, I'd notice if a foundation was cracked. I would hope so, yeah. And you, and you probably <laughs> wouldn't notice that, but right. you would notice somebody's right. shoulders being right. out. Yep. There is so much that has to do with the body alignment, isn't there? I mean, well, it's... there is, there is. Well, you've got your nervous system that comes out in between there, and uh, and it goes all over the body. So that's that's where we as chiropractors, um, that's what we do. You know, that's we want to make sure there's no pressure on the nervous system, mm-hmm. whether that be going down your arm, down your leg, into your back, even affects organs as well. So big you, deal. If you studied any of that foot massage stuff where they had the reflexology yeah where they say i I have not um you know just looking at anatomy i you don't have to believe in it to work but you know some people think it works great i've just not had a lot of experience with with it to say that tell you yes it works or it doesn't but because they'll they'll have a foot and they'll say pituitary gland ears and right wonder who figured that out or Thinks they figured it out. I would say it's probably uh, overseas somewhere and and came over this way. I would think that Mm -hmm. it might have something to do with something. Well, I'm sure that certain parts of the foot definitely you can affect things, you know, Mm -hmm. but uh, um, I wish I had a little more knowledge base of that, but uh, I've seen it a lot, but I have not studied it per se. I had this friend of mine that was having some issues and he went to a uh, acupuncture it's right. here in town. Right. And uh, they seem to help to a point. Right. Yep. Kind of the same, you know, thing is is um, our, our even board has a special acupuncturist part of our board that we have mm-hmm. to, if we do that, we have to, you know, pass and, and be subjected to their rules and stuff. Well, it, but they don't have that for the foot massage people, not, right? No, I, no, I don't know of any board that monitors that or regulates that. It makes you think that maybe acupuncture does have a, a real need yeah if there's you know a tennessee board that is involved with that there's there's Mm -hmm. there's definitely some involved um some some benefit of it you know Mm -hmm. from there but there's also a risk too that's why the boards are there is to protect sure yeah you know so we want those boards don't we (laughs) we do if there's not a board regulating it i'm a little nervous right and i i I would agree do you see uh you, were you originally from Cleveland, or where? I am. You from? Yeah, uh, right up. I'm from MMRs up there, up off of Peerless, where I oh. was born and raised up there. And then, who are you related um, to in Cleveland? So my dad's Don Lee. My mom is Joanne Lee. He worked at Boatwaters for 42 years mm. before he retired, and uh, they're still living. Um, and they're about 85 years old now. Did he come here with Boatwaters? No, he was. Uh, he was from here um, originally as well. So. Yeah, we've got a long line of people here. I knew Russell Lee. I don't guess there's any connection. I don't. I, I know of him, but I don't know know him personally. But mm-hmm. um, so I didn't realize you were originally from Cleveland. Yeah, Did you go sure. to Bradley or Cleveland or what? I only went to Cleveland. So yeah. Are you in your fifties yet? I am. I am fifty five. Just mm-hmm. turned fifty five in September. Mm-hmm. So we're about the same age. So. Uh, I don't think we've ever crossed paths, have we? Uh, we, I think we talked about a building one time. We were looking at building a building, and we talked right? to you a little bit over there off of uh, Atkinson, uh, <clears throat> next to the dermatology group. We were looking at something over there, but yeah, I have. Oh, maybe we was talking through a realtor. Uh, we were. Oh, yeah. That was a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, right. that that would have been a good place, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think that's going to be very positive for somebody over there. So, mm. right. Are you open five days a week or what? Um, I am open four. Uh, I used to be open three. So we, we need a little more time in there. And um, But uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, we do appointments on Tuesday just because we do a little longer stuff that day. Mm-hmm. And then we actually do uh, walk-ins for established patients on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Thursday. People love that because they don't have to worry about being late or, you know, calling if they're, you know, making appointments and, and they used to pop in if it's real busy. It's kind of like a barbershop's busy and come back mm-hmm. later you know, yeah. if you want to and stuff. So I enjoy it too. It's kind of nice for, for us. Because a lot of times you, you don't know what time you can be there. And right. it's something that's right. only going to take 10 minutes, right? Right, right. Yeah, and sometimes not even that long, you know, if you're an established patient. Yeah. So we do try to make appointments for our first-time patients because it just takes, you know, you know 30 minutes or so mm-hmm. from there. But I always wonder why a chiropractic place didn't have a 
massage therapist with it. Some do. Yeah, there's actually some here in town that have that. I, I have had a few before that have done that as well. Um, they'll rent space from me or we never really mm -hmm. hired them as a, an employee. But yeah, um, yeah, and there's definitely some benefit from that. W wonder uh, if you if you get the wonder which would be better to get adjustment and then a massage or a massage and then an adjustment. Well, if you do massage first, it's a lot easier on the chiropractor for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't really matter as far as one way or the other. But you know, I have found it seems to be a little bit easier to adjust a patient when they've already had, if they've come the same day or just recently right mm -hmm. from it. I've had had them come in and they got the wool all on them still. You know. Oh yeah. From there. Does does a lot of people um, are they harder to adjust in the mornings? You know, I would. And really at night is hard, you know, in late afternoon, after, uh -huh. especially after they worked. Oh, really? Uh, especially if they left an office job, it's actually quite a bit difficult mm -hmm. more to do it then. Uh, the mornings is actually a little easier by far. What possessed you to get into to this business? Well, I, I played baseball and I played high school and some, a little bit of college, and, and I got injured, and they really benefited me. And I like working with my hands and just prayed about it and I felt like, you know, this is really a good place for me to be. Uh, I've loved it ever since, you know, it, it, and it, it's just perfect for what I do. And, um, and, and the good thing, too, is we don't have to use drugs and surgery. We can see people get better without having to re rely on the pharmaceutical companies and, the, and, mm. and drug and surgery. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to see. And we, we've, we have really ventured out since I've, I've started this 31 years. I think it was 31 years. Let's see. Yeah, 31 years I've been doing this. Um, and now we're just kind of doing a little more more elaborate stuff, you know, as far as our more, not just adjustments, but we do do a lot of treatment for neuropathy. Oh, um, yeah. We have a, that's a kind of a. Well, that's, a, that uh, seems to be like more people have neuropathy than I. Well, they do. Why, yeah. Why is it such a, I don't know if I'm just getting at the age where I'm hearing people that's got it more. Right. Or if more people are getting it and wonder yeah. what, if they are, what's your thoughts? Well, I, I think somewhat diabetic, you know, di diabetes is, is growing, and that's a big part of neuropathy, too, because as you get more sugar in your body and your body doesn't know what to do with it, so to speak, it kind of kills off the nervous nerves, and you're, especially in your feet and your legs. And it can get your hands, too, but especially feet and legs. Um, and we've got a technique. Where I'm part of a group called Blueprint, mm -hmm. and they've created this whole system uh, that we get 90 to 94% success rate, which is unheard of, of getting people better. I've got a couple other people. They just can't seem to get rid of. It. Yeah, well, our stuff works. I mean, if they're, it, we have to uh, make sure they're the right candidate. You know, some people aren't aren't for this for what mm -hmm. we do, but uh, it it works incredibly well. Um, and it's it's not drugs. It's not surgery. Uh, a lot of people they come in and they they say, hey, my MD said I got neuropathy. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. um, and they just give us this gabapentin and Lyrica. And then they have to take more and more and more. And gabapentin is a seizure drug, so it's what are they? Yeah. What's those drugs supposed to do? Well, it just numbs them up. You know, it just kind of numbs the pain. So, um, especially with neuropathy, they have a lot of problems at night. They can't sleep at night. Their feet are burning. They're on fire. Or numb, um, a numb, tingling numb, feeling. Yeah. And then eventually, I've had people step on nails, not even feel it. Golly. It's that bad. You know, um, I've had them come in. They've been amputated already. They've lost their toes and their feet mm. or whatever, and they're trying to save something. Uh, but our system, I, it surprises me sometimes how good it works. I'm, I'm so excited to be able to offer that to, to this area. How is diabetes, how would it kill the nerves to the, to the feet or hands? So it's kinda, it kind of has to do with sugar. You know, I, used, I, had a, um, I had a friend of mine who was real bad diabetic when he was in, in, in chiropractic school. And I used to, he would, but he'd still eat sugar. And so... Um, and I would talk about how it's affecting his organs. So it's kind of like an acid. You know, if you think of the sugar, if you don't have insulin to offset the sugar and regulate it into energy, into your muscles and things like that, then mm -hmm. your body just deposits it in places. And it, a lot of times it affects the nervous system. So it just, you know? it just, so if I eat sugar and my body says, hey, we've got too much here, it'll send it to the, to maybe the, the extremities? Well, that's kind of a way of looking at it. And it's, store, it's and it store it there? Yeah, it's going to store hey. it in, in fat. And then, but it is, think of, I just like to think of it as like acid. You know, if you don't have too much and you need something to offset the acid, so mm -hmm. to speak, or the excess, uh, and if, you, if you're not producing enough insulin, then that's what happens. It goes, uh, goes to different places and it, over time, it slowly deteriorates and eats away at those nerves, especially in your feet or the furthest away from your heart, you know, yeah. so to speak. Right. And, 
Um, and it yeah, just, sending yeah. the sugar as far away from your heart as it can. That's probably yeah. a, a safety mechanism somehow. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it too. Right. Yeah. So um, now, if you're not a diabetic, you still need to watch your sugar or. What's your, I mean, how much do you need? I mean, I eat ice cream every now and then. Yeah, well, that's okay. Moderation is the key, mm-hmm. you know. So just not going over, over, you know, overwhelming yourself with mm-hmm. that and whatnot. How do you know if you're overwhelming yourself with it? Well, you know, obviously getting your blood checked, you know, uh, every six months to a year, making sure your insulin and your sugar levels are, are good. The, the glucose levels. Right, right. And that's really the biggest key mm-hmm. with that. Mm-hmm. Family history is a big part, too. You know, if you have diabetes in your family, you, you might have a good chance of having mm-hmm. that as well. So you mm-hmm. need to, you know, make sure. Would, how, would, how would chiropractic help diabetics? Well, you know, there's always that thing sometimes people have, um, e- even in chiropractic school, we have to be taught, you know, there's certain things you got to be careful how you say. I right. mean, if your spine's not working right and your nervous system is off, it can affect a ton of things. Even, yes, even your pancreas. But we don't go out preaching, hey, we're going to cure diabetes. Mm. That's not our goal. But we just make the body work as good as it can so that it will help, hopefully, whatever problems it may be having inside there. So you're just chiropractic in my opinion, is just releasing the muscle tension and aligning the body to let the nervous system work correctly. That, that sums it up pretty good right there. So so um, above, down, inside, out is kind of we're taught in chiropractic school. It's like, you know, your brain down your spinal cord, out through the nervous system. Mm-hmm. That's where true healing occurs, you know. Uh, so... Um, you know, there's the germ theory too, like, you know, germs cause disease. Well, we, we think of it, I know this will sound really weird, but germs really don't cause disease. It's your immune system that causes disease, you know? So mm-hmm. if your immune system, so they gave us this example, and one of, I can always remember this, like pretend a whole class of kindergartners and they all exposed to, a, a, let's say, a, a cold or, a, or a, the mm-hmm. flu, but they don't all get it. Well, if the germs cause disease, they should all get it, you right, know? Right. Uh, so it depends on how your immune system handles that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just kind of a different way of looking at it, you know, instead of, we're always worried about germs, 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 especially through COVID, you know, but it's getting your immune system strong and getting that to be able to handle all that. Cause you're gonna, you have germs everywhere we go, you know, so. Um, the, the nervous system, is it electricity it's sending through there or is it blood or, or what is it sending? Through your well, body. electricity is a great way of looking at it. It's like uh, um, we have two, it's like you have sodium and potassium that switch. And uh, as a relay, it, this happens obviously very fast, but as it relays, that's how the signal gets carried down through there. So it's, it's very much like electricity. So it sort of is just a minuscule electricity, I right. guess. Right, there you go. It's the communicator between your, you know, your brain's a big nerve and the rest of your body. I went to, I had a real bad sinus infection one time. I was probably three or four years ago. And I had gone to the, went to the chiropractor because I get a, uh, my hips, my hips yeah. get out. Right. For some reason. I don't right. know why. And, uh, and he adjusted me. And by the time I left, my sinuses were better. Yeah. And it happens it, all the time. Was yeah. that a, re- was that related Oh, yes, very much so. I mean, yeah, it happens all the time. It was yeah. too weird. It was just... Right. It will happen draining right before they leave. It's not a guarantee, but we have several that do that. You sure. Know? Yeah. I, I, I just noticed that. Right. Um, do you think that people's... What causes people's bodies to get out besides... Is it? Is it? Is it a stronger right leg or... Like, for instance, I ride bicycles and my, my right hip gets out. Right. And I'll find myself pulling more with my right leg, I guess, because it's stronger. Yeah. And so I think that's what's pulling me out of, out of alignment. That, that could be, and muscle imbalances are, are a big part of that. Uh, usually it starts from trauma, you know, old car accidents or, um, you know, it could, even as their bo- a baby is born, sometimes that causes trauma to their mm-hmm. Their bodies. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that and falls and things as kids that we don't realize because we're mm-hmm. kind of resilient. We just kind of keep going. But, um, yeah, that's, 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 was, I see a lot of people that have been in a car accident 20 years ago and didn't deal with it. And they'll come in and they've got this big problem, you know, mm-hmm. since then. So, and maybe they don't even relate it to that, to that thing. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
sports trauma. That's a, that's a great way of getting it too. That's what I personally had, you know, when I started going to the chiropractor. Well, what was it that you got out? It was a hip as well. So, okay. uh, uh, and uh, they were playing baseball, mm -hmm. and and so that it made a big difference. Even my knee, when I just they adjusted my hip, it affected my knee. You know, sure, so, yeah, in a way, in a good way. So. I'll ride behind somebody that's riding a bike sometimes, and their knee will go. I've, I notice this a lot. Right, the knees will go. It, they'll do a right. figure eight. Yeah. That can't be good. No, there's Constant. probably something wrong somewhere, you know, in a knee or a hip. And their left back, ones, so. and there's... Right. I'm sure there's something out of balance in there. Because that's got to be more strain on one side of the knee than the other. Right. And yeah, we're all about balance, so you want to be balanced as much as possible, just like a tire on your car, you know, so, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, do you think yoga is a good thing? Does that help align you, or does that help strengthen both sides maybe well I, I think it's great for the stretching part of that you know and it, and it helps too with the mental part of it too because it helps you to mm -hmm. you know be in, get in a relaxed state yeah. and, and help you know uh there's there's so much to stretching that that would make a huge difference in people if they would do that when i get up and stretch in the morning i feel so much better yeah makes I, a big think difference. It, I think it's i think it's more important than weights i i agree with that i agree with that but um, you got to have some weights, though, too, weight-bearing exercises, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, we lose muscle atrophy as we get older, too, not only shrinking, but we want to mm -hmm. make sure those muscles don't degenerate, you know, to hold us together. But stretching, I, I would definitely say, is more important than the weights. Boy, it's so important to keep your body tuned, isn't it? It is. It is, you know. It won't help hair growth, will it? <laughs> I wish it would. I would have been there already. So. <laughs> I would, too. <laughs> I yeah. bet, bet it has something to do with blood flow that's that would slow it down though yeah i bet if it, if we'd have done it earlier well I, i'd like to see a study on that yeah. maybe we could yeah. yeah did you go i know she online you went to school in buff in new york well i i didn't actually go there but i've got uh -huh. some i went to a medical school up there mm. uh it was mostly it was all online you know through oh, okay. some uh some of that but yeah i've got some some um credentials through a medical study oh. a medical group up yeah. there too as well did you when you went to Cle did you go to cleveland state I did for a little bit before I went into chiropractic school, and then so yes. So what year would you have gone to chiropractic school? So about? I started in '89, and I got out in '93. Yeah. So and I started in I actually started in in Hickson, uh, down in Hickson, Tennessee. Uh -huh. I had a practice down there for about six years, and I also had one in Etowah, Tennessee. I um, like Etowah. Yeah, it's a neat town. I had a both at the same time so uh, it was just too much and then uh, so i sold them both and moved back home uh in june 2000 it's actually when i moved mm. here so in etowah where was your place in etowah you remember where garen realty building yep. Yeah, yep. right there in that building oh yeah. yeah in the kind of in across from the green thumb was it a green thumb right i can't used remember to a, used to be a, a drive-through rest a drive-through a drive-up restaurant there, there was the there street. A, um there was a there was I bill garen was that night no Garen, it's Garen. I can't remember his first name now. That was night. I sold in nineteen ninety nine. He died, I think, no. didn't he? He may have. He, he wasn't uh, super young when I was there. But Doctor Al Reimer bought that from me mm -hmm. for, out of Athens. So. Garen Realty. He sold everything there. If you lived in Etowah, he was the realtor. I think he was. I think he was. He, yeah, I think he was. And he had a guy that worked for him, uh, Spivy or something like that, or Perry Sperry. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, that's a long drive from Etowah to Hickson. It was. And that's then we like lived a, at Udwa at the time, so. God, that's like yeah. an hour and a half drive, isn't it? Hour? it it's a, uh, well, so certain days of the week I'd go to different ones, you know. So I would yeah. I would actually drive from Udwa, drop my uh, young daughter off at the time at my parents' house, mm -hmm. drive all the way back to Hickson, and then all the way back up here to pick her buck up, and then all the way back to Udwa. <laughs> I got kind of old after a while, yeah. you know. And so. then Etowah, I guess you went down what? Bowater Road? Yeah, or? it was just going down Bowater Road and then uh, up that um, through Delano and everything. How yeah. many tickets did you get going through Calhoun? I was careful. I, I know my dad working at Bowater oh, you always knew. told me, yeah. do not stop. go fast. Get out through. of the car yeah. when you come to a <laughs> stop sign. Get out of the car and walk around it so they yeah. don't say you rode through it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, right. I did that one right. time. The police were there, and I got out of the car and walked around it, got back in, took off, so he wouldn't think right. that Absolutely. I... Absolutely. <laughs> I can agree with that, yeah. 
Yeah, my dad had, we used to make fun of it. He had a nine color truck uh, when I was a kid. And he, uh -huh. I think he got pulled over just because of that one yeah, time. Because right. he had all these different body parts mm -hmm. on it and stuff. But What, was he a, a kind of a body man? Uh, well, no, he he, uh, he he's a mechanic, uh, gifted mechanical, um, and so he's a millwright up there. So he could just about fix anything or do anything, mm -hmm. and so he he just bought parts and pieces and put mm -hmm. you know put this truck back together, and he just never bothered painting it. So there was a song about a guy that did that, wasn't there? He Johnny had, Cash made Johnny a song. Johnny Cash. Yeah. What was the name of that song? Uh, 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 let's see. He he worked in a factory and he, he yeah, drove he all those carry parts out. out at a time. Yeah, and his lunch pail. Right? Yeah, and, it, yeah. and they said, "What model car is?" He says, "The '67 Yeah, right. I was, yeah, that was a good song. <laughs> was I it Johnny remember. Cash? It was Johnny Cash who made that song. Yeah, I can't remember, I can't remember how that song goes, but it was really funny if you listen to right. it. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> and probably true for a lot right. of those. Those automotive factory things. Uh, they may have. Uh, they may uh, have bought or borrowed a few things. So, uh -huh. who'd you graduate with? What that would have been? Because we're about the same age. Let's see. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I graduated with uh, Todd Shoemaker. Um, he was a president or a principal of Bradley recently, um, and then uh, I had Mike Calf. He was in our class, um, and um, oh, there was a ton. Um, I was trying to think of some of the that you might would know, but well, you lived close. That did you live off Peerless Road at I that did. time? I did. Yeah, I could have walked you, if I yeah. wanted to. So yeah. um, I, yeah. I grew up on Norman Chapel. Oh, is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was right down the hill. There. Yeah, did right you go to down. Cleveland yourself? Or? Went to Cleveland seventh, yeah. eighth, and ninth, yeah. and then went to Bradley. I got you. I was there. I think. Uh, yeah, we used to walk to Fulbright. Right to the yeah. ballpark. That was a great place. Right. Yeah, I, I guess you well. went, didn't you? Yeah, I played there many years. So yeah. Who'd you play for? Who you, who was your coaches? Oh boy, I don't know if I can remember their names now. But uh, uh, um, well, I remember the high school. You know, I played for Danny Carson. You know, and yeah. in, uh, in high school, but I can't remember some of the the little ones. But um, we actually started baseball. Behind Bradley, you know, there was a uh, there we had one coach, and he coached all the teams. Um, this was almost like a venture of diaper league, but it was t-ball. It'd be a uh, Coach Palmer, I guess. I, I, that may be uh, that yeah. name sounds familiar, but he talked like uh, this. I, I think kind so. Kind of talked out of the side of his mouth. And so, but he he would coach every he would one coach of the all teams. the teams. Yeah. yeah, all the same. So uh, I remember starting there. Yeah, and Noel then Palmer move over. To, I think it may have been him. Mm -hmm. So they moved over Fulbright after that. So, right. Yeah. And then Fulbright, you know, that's uh, that was um, it was a shame they had to tear it down. But uh, well, I know it. I don't even remember when they tore it down. I guess I was already up and going and right. wasn't thinking or you know wasn't even paying attention because yeah. there's certain period in your life where you're just trying to get something going. Right. Yeah, I, I can't remember either. I just uh, uh, it was a good place at the time. So. Mm -hmm. Do you? Uh, a lot of people sit at their computer. When I sit at my computer. I've started getting a hump in my back, I think, in my neck. Is that just from doing that? Well, uh, there's that older thing, you know, as it starts, as your body starts to shrink, sometimes we'll, we'll lean forward. Yeah. And uh, they'll have charts where they'll show people getting older and they'll start leaning that way. So <laughs> I yeah. hope I don't get yeah. that. Yeah, so it's, a, it's important to build up, like, the back muscles. Like, I don't know what a, what a lap pull down is. Like I've got a pull-up bar right there. I That's do, perfect. I do about two or three a night, but yeah. they're, they're not easy to do. No, they're not. If so. you just go like this, yeah. it's... You think you can do five or ten, but right. you can't hardly do it from a hanging position. Right, it's tough. I would use a lat pull down. If you have a lat pull down machine, you pull it back behind you, and then rowing type work. That really helps build those back muscles up. And you look you like you work out. I do. Yeah. Where, where do you work out at? I have my I have the thing in my house that I, I do. I try to do it at lunch every day, but don't always get to. But yeah, that uh, don't work very yeah. good, does it? Sometimes, but the going to the gym doesn't work either. You got to yeah, pack you're tired stuff. at night, and then you got to you know, right. So we have a little thing in the bottom in our basement. My mm -hmm. my wife and I made, and and uh, it works out pretty good for us. And so you got a little routine. Yeah, I have a TV on the wall, so we're able to kind of distract. You know, on the tread when you're on the treadmill, you can distract yourself. You know? Yeah, so that helps. Yeah, doesn't it? oh, it does. it does. They say that's why the army people do that chant. Well, that's true. To keep yeah. them in stride and the cadence, and right. they don't realize how. How much further they got to yeah. go. <laughs> That's a good way of thinking about it, mm -hmm. right? I didn't realize that until I saw yeah. a guy online. But when you do pull-ups, do, do you do them from a hanging position? That's 
that seems to hurt my neck too, yeah. unless you just go down like this or something. Well, I, I think it's better until you get really used to it is to cheat a little bit and go ahead and have, step up on a step and be a little bit already already, already yeah. up there. You so know? if you're going from here, yeah, that's good enough? That's a good start. Definitely. Does that help that right. back, that neck thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you're about building this back up, now there's there's isometrics too. It's great for a neck. Like if you're hunched over a lot, yeah. isometric is like putting your hands behind your back and pulling forward, like pulling this way and pulling resistance. An isometric is... Oh, you're not really getting anywhere. Like, I'm I'm doing an isometric and it quivers. You know, your muscle quivers, but it's not really going. Mm -hmm. So that works really good. So I'm I'm putting direct pressure both ways. So what are you uh, trying to do when you do that? Well, most of us have a so we're having, supposed to have a curve like this in our neck. Like this over this way, like a C. Oh, backwards. Better, yeah, um, and then the problem is it, it ends up this way. It's sometimes reverse. Mm -hmm. So if you can build off these muscles in the back, it'll help you with that long term. You know, like. Three sets of 10 of isometrics, just holding it for five seconds. Like you this? Know? Yeah. So I'm pulling forward with my hands, but I'm pushing back with my neck at the same time. Oh, I'm just putting yeah. some pressure. Yeah, so I'm pushing back as hard as I can into my hands. And that's putting, that's yeah. making my neck. building those up right like that. Because so. when you go like that, it's not the, it's not the, the neck muscles. I mean, it's not the, 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 the spine, it's, it's the muscles getting weaker. Right, exactly. right, and not not being used. Because you know, a lot of times we don't look up, you know, look as much and, and and build those muscles up to help that hole in there. You know, I remember when we used to, when I used to wrestle, they'd make you lean back and and roll on your head. Remember right. those? I do. I remember playing football doing that with the helmet. Mean, so yeah, I tried that here a while back, and don't it do that. made me. Is yeah. it, <laughs> is it, is it? You can only do it when you're young, or what? Pretty much, you're right. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty bad stretch to do. I don't know if they even do that now. They might. So but, you're saying uh, it might not have even been good then. I wouldn't recommend it, you know, so. But uh, back then I had real strong neck muscles right? from that. Right. So, but you don't think it, it seems unnatural. Yeah. When you go back there rolling like that, we take our helmets and go back like that. Rolling oh and, yeah. You know, and, and yeah, it's, you're crunching all that stuff together. That's it not, can't that's, be that, good. that's not the good way to go. So maybe just laying on the bed and letting your neck hang down. That's Reckon great, that would be the same thing. thing. That's a great maybe thing. Maybe do some, right. go like that or something. Yeah, increases range of motion, but but doing those isometrics is the best thing I've found that, that really helps build up mm. um, the muscles, you know, mm. inside there. Mm. What about, I uh, feel like I'm getting free chiropractic information, <laughs> but but uh, like, uh, like shoulders get tight. You know, I can hear my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're back to that motion. Motion is is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, life is about motion, you know, to getting in, increased range of motion. Um, we, we we used to do a um, to try to explain to patients if you take a, a a metal chain and just lay it on the ground, mm -hmm. and you take two of them, and the only difference is you kick one of them periodically, and you let the other one just do its thing. Then at the end of a period of time, if you take both, which one's stronger? The one that you moved because it because it balanced out over time mm. the one that you kicked so the one that's sedentary it's going to break first because it rusted only on one side so you got to have motion all around to make that work you, you know? got to keep moving you have to keep moving it's so important that's the minimum right just keep moving get out walk and stretching maybe stretching's the second minimum and the third one's a little bit of, of weight i think that's a great great order Absolutely. I yeah. wonder if uh, yoga would be the probably one of the best things you could do. <clears throat> but I don't know who gives yoga lessons. I don't know if it's the best thing, and it definitely could be a part of the. You know, when we were growing up, you were sissy if you took yoga. Yeah. You remember that? Absolutely. Yeah, a little bit on I the mean, hot would, side. Oh, you know, yeah. So, yeah. But we wouldn't. But now yeah. I, I could see. I've never even heard of yoga when we were growing. I don't think you know. So, no, it'd be uh, like taking or gymnastics yeah. or something. Yeah. That wouldn't have been. Yeah, that would be more. Yeah. More of that, but. Yeah, I think I'm going to take yoga bit. sometime and, and yeah. really stretch myself out. I, that's that's what I feel like I need yeah. to do is just stretch. I feel like I need to be put on the table and just stretched right. about three inches. Well, you know, there's the inversion tables, too. Those are those are really good. Is I that think. where you hang so, upside down? Mm -hmm. yeah, they're I, about 150 bucks over here at Dunham's. And, um, I, uh, it seems like I remember a doctor here in town yeah. died on one of them. That might have been I a, don't know. A flip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So with that inversion thing, that's what I need. Was it like hold your hips or something? Yeah, it actually holds your ankles. And then oh. you, you flip yourself upside down. Well, but what it does, it, you know, gravity is 
pushing us this mm -hmm. way, so we go the other way. That can help with the, the shrinkage part of your body, you know, over time. If mm -hmm. you open those up, you actually can get water back inside the disc. So, well, I bet that'd feel good, too. Yeah. So we have, like, we have a decompression. I don't know if you ever heard of that or not, mm -hmm. but uh, really bad lower backs and necks, we mm -hmm. use, we use uh, decompression in our office. Mm -hmm. And so we have a system that actually opens up the spine, and we have pre- and post-MRIs that show that this actually... Uh, rehydrates the disc and makes yeah. it work. So, but this this is a lot more fancy than than the than the inversion table. But when you open those up like that, we get we'll it'll retract disc herniated disc back in there, bulging disc and stuff. Uh, very successful mm -hmm. at that. So, um, some people's yeah. back you can see the bulging disc. Have you ever seen well, that? Well, you can't really see a disc. You can see the results of where it was. You know, what would but, that be? A, the bone or what? Or well, you got bones that'll stick out in some people that are, you know, skinny enough to see it. But then you, you usually a muscle bone. Like if you have a nervous pinch, uh, the way God made the mighty to work is it's going to go into some degree of spasm, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that spasm will show up like one side will be tighter than the other. And that's so it's, a, mu so it's a muscle. Yeah, your body's trying to compensate or trying to protect that nerve. Mm -hmm. So if you think of the nerve as the most important thing, I'm not saying that it is, but think of it that way. Everything's going to be designed to protect that nervous system. So the muscles are going, to are going to tighten up. You're going to swell. It's trying to prevent, you know, catastrophic event from mm -hmm. happening to that nerve in there. So that's probably what you're seeing is some of that mm -hmm. on that. So that's uh, that's just a muscle, just kind of swollen because it's trying to pull from one side yeah, to the other. It's a good way of looking about. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, so you're you're practice you're you you would what stretch a person out to. To, yeah, to, de, uh, with decompression, that works great. You know, if you've got a really bad lower back, like a herniated disc or bulging disc mm -hmm. or even a degenerative disc, when we do that the right way over a period of time, it actually works. It works really, really. That's kind of our worst case patients that we that aren't responding maybe to traditional chiropractic mm -hmm. care or maybe in conjunction with what we're, we're adjustments. We, we'll put them on there, too, uh, and get some really good results with that. I bet that takes a couple of different visits, so that wouldn't it, it be does. a one it takes shot. A, yeah, it takes usually within over a few months period of time. Like once a week or something? Yeah, we usually start out three a week for mm -hmm. decompressions about mm -hmm. a 24-visit protocol mm -hmm. over three months. Mm -hmm. So um, it's stretch it out, but they get results a lot quicker than that, but just to make sure we you know, really got it. So, And then we have a new, we have a new thing called SoftWave. It's a shocking system. Mm -hmm. We're getting really good results with that. Um, but it's a system that was developed overseas, recently mm -hmm. been cleared by the FDA to mm -hmm. come to the United States. And uh, it hits your body at over 3,000 miles an hour with this impulse. Mm. And it causes, it's almost like hitting you with a baseball bat, uh, but not really. It's kind of a fake trauma. Yeah. And it causes your stem cells to react. Mm. And it, 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 we get shoulders and knees and backs with that. It's pretty exciting to see lately. We, I'll tell you a funny story. I went to a chiropractor one time and he put these little suction things on my on yep. my back and then yeah, cupping yeah, yeah and he'd, he'd well well this would he'd stick it on there and, and turn the electricity on for like right, 20 right. minutes and leave me there yeah so uh so i went there one saturday morning he turned it on and anyway i got done and and uh, i left and so about noon i realized i've still got these how funny. Oh, wires. Yeah. <laughs> he forgot to take them off my I back. Say, yeah, it can happen. <laughs> it we, was, yeah. And I couldn't reach him, you know, and he was already closed, so it was a, it was a weird thing. Yeah, I don't know how many people saw me with those <laughs> wires hanging out. I reckon they had a, yeah. another connection or right, something. Right, right. Well, we had, I had stories of chiropractors that forgot somebody and went to lunch and came back. Oh, you know, God. And they left, uh, fell asleep on the table, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, um, let's see, uh, Steve Hartline was here one time. He said he had he had woke up a time or two late, and, and he, he could get on the radio and say, and as I was saying, <laughs> in, case, <laughs> That's a good way in case nobody was. Right. Was, <laughs> right, yeah, there you go. Boy, if you left them there while they was asleep, that would be, uh, that would be, uh, that'd make you feel funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, wake up and and just act like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, hey, you're yeah, done, so. yeah. we got you finished <laughs> up here. Right. Is there a, uh, now, now some of these doctors, some of these chiropractors are ODs, right? Or what do they call that? A DO? A DO, Doctor yeah. of Oster, what do you call it? Uh, osteopathy. Yeah. Uh, so, so is that yeah. another level or is that the same thing? Well, I, I'll give you a story. So, okay. um, so, so the medical profession, the DOs used to be a doctor of osteopathy, uh, osteopath, uh, used to be their own thing. And so the MDs kind of 
swallowed them up a little bit, the uh, AMA and stuff. And, and so they, they are actually medical doctors, really. Uh, but they have some, some knowledge base and some similar to chiropractic care, but not the same. You know, they, they're mostly medical oriented, you know, mm-hmm. you know, drugs and surgery and things like that. But they have some training in uh, manipulate, gross manipulation of the spine, whereas we call it an adjustment more specific to that. So, but b- back in 1985, our our association sued the AMA, and we won. Uh, as and they had to just basically say, yeah, we were trying to make you guys look bad and say mm-hmm. bad things, mm-hmm. and and so so that they, it was a slap on the wrist to them. They just had to just say, you know, we're sorry, more or less. Yeah. But, uh, but just you know, and that knowing that they were trying to uh, swallow up the chiropractic profession. You know. So now, so back back then, it had more. It's sort of like a chiropractor that could prescribe medicine, and now it's sort of just a a, a, a different level of a doctor, I guess. Yeah, it really back. is, really is. So yeah. So there's not a big difference. You know, I get all confused about the chiropractor, uh, D, uh, do, then you got a PA. Right, and yeah. then there's another thing. There's there's an NP, a NP, yeah, right. And you got CNA that's before a nurse, and then you got a nurse. Yeah, there's, then you there's got a an lot. MD. Right, there's a lot of initials out there. And then you, yeah. but you know, years ago, I don't wonder when they even started having a doctor's uh, designation. I don't know. Yeah, you know, um, Granny Clampett was a doc. She claimed she yeah, was a doctor. Right, right, that's true. <laughs> that's good TV. Yeah. yeah, she always claimed she was a doctor. Right. I remember one episode she had figured out how to cure the common cold, and the, the pharmaceutical people came to her, and and she had said, "Yep, if you take her medicine, you get rid of that cold in seven days." Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, right. Like, which cold's gonna go away in seven right. days anyway? Usually, right. I think I remember that too. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. Um, now I've noticed a lot of chiropractors will have a; they'll sell a lot of supplements on right. the side. Right. Is that a wonder why that goes with chiropractic so much? Well, you know, there's there's kind of five basic. Uh, elements of, of health as we, we look at it, you know, uh, um, sleep and exercise and diet's part of that, positive mental attitude. And then we also say in chiropractic school, a, a body free of nervous interference, you know, but uh, so diet's a big part of that, you know, so a lot of people aren't, um, you typically don't, and your medical doctor see that, you know, so somebody, mm-hmm. somebody really needs to, nutrition is very important. So it's, it's people, there's not a lot of people that talk about that or doctors that help with that, mm-hmm. you know, maybe a natural path. There's another thing. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, natural. Yeah. 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 Natural but, uh, Yeah. But, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's, that's, that's why we, we, I found with nutrition, we have a, you know, do I take A, D, E, K, how much of these do I, it's yeah. just so overwhelming that yeah. I have found, let's keep it simple. So we, we actually offer the only one we really offer is a, um, it's a multi-level liquid vitamin that covers everything. So, um, that's to me the easiest way is just take something that covers it all and your body will get rid of whatever is in excess anyway. You know, I, so. I found that out. The yeah. body will just get rid of it real quick. In fact, it, it gets rid of it real quick. I take a vitamin D every day. And yeah. They say it only lasts about two hours in your body. So, yeah. But boy, I feel better when I'm taking it. Yeah, that's announced a big important thing, especially for bony structure and stuff too, you know, so. Oh, I, yeah. I can, uh, if, I'm, if I take a vitamin D3, it's just... Uh, it's really, mm. I can tell it. I can tell a difference the yeah. next day. That's a big one. I can tell take. when I skip right. it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just supposed to be sunlight, I think. It's yeah, like it, a, well, it is, but if we don't get enough of that, then, mm-hmm. you know, especially in the winter months, then mm-hmm. um, you can actually be more prone to the flu with not, uh, vitamin D. We don't hear that a lot, but mm-hmm. um, they did a study uh, in another country. They took three floors of, of prisoners. And they found that, and they would not give vitamin D to certain ones, mm-hmm. and uh, much, much more involved with flu mm-hmm. and stuff in, mm-hmm. in there. That D3 is supposed to have calcium, magnesium, and zinc. The one that and, you take. So. Yeah, yeah, and my, my understanding is magnesium and calcium have to be take, taken together, or calcium won't absorb into the body unless it's company with magnesium, something like that. Who yeah. knows, right? Yeah, I mean, it's good to take them both, you know, so there's... You can you can hear so many different stories about nutrition, you yeah. know. So that's why I feel like it's 
instead of getting overwhelmed with, oh, I should take more B12 mm -hmm. or vitamin mm -hmm. C, whatever, just take it all. That way you've got yourself covered and your body will take care of itself. If it's too much of something, it's gonna get rid of it. This thing you know? you're talking about, how, how much does it have the, supposedly the daily allowance in it? Yeah, it has more than that, you know, in it, what we have. And we, so your body will extract the vitamin A that it doesn't need. Yeah, it, it, yes, it will. Now you, there are, a, D, E, and K vitamins are fat soluble. So you'd have to take a bathtub full as to how I would, I would think of it before you overwhelm yourself or get mm -hmm. toxicity of that. Um, but just our normal vitamins, you're yeah. not gonna overdose you on that. Well, so. you take them once, uh, but they're in liquid form? Right, because your body doesn't absorb it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I got another story, we, all these stories, we've been to so many seminars, but this, this particular person owned a porter toilet business. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy was touring their facility. And they said, what's that pile of white stuff over there? And he said, oh, that's the syndrome and all the stuff that people pass through their body. You know, the pills would come out, so they, they, would, they had them stored up. Is that up right? On, right. Because you're, you're going to absorb very little in those, those type of pills. That's why you need to get it either in a capsule that has powder in it or mm -hmm. a liquid form to make sure your body absorbs the best chance of absorbing that. Otherwise, maybe it would some, or, but the liquid form would have to be the best. Oh, it is. I, I have, I've taken x-rays, and I see them in their... In, in, down in their lower back, you'll see it with their body's pattern. What is that thing? And I, I know it's a vitamin they take. And so. so is it, but it dissolves eventually, right? Yeah, or passes through. Yeah. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I always, I always think you just need to do it liquid or powder. One of the, How, uh, the, the one that you sell, do you have to take it, what, twice a day or three no, times? just once a day. Like in the morning? Yeah, I, I usually do it in the morning for myself. It's mm -hmm. just a little cup full or half a cup full. Um, yeah. It, so you just take it like a cup of, like you would knock or something with those little... Yeah, yeah, put it in the refrigerator and, and yeah. a half a cup full, mm -hmm. and um, it, it works really, really good. So you feel like, uh, has it got vitamin K in it too? Uh, yes. It, um, well, I have to make sure about that. Um, I always wonder what vitamin K does for you. Well, that's the blood clotter. That's supposed to help with your, um, you know, your blood and how it processes and mm -hmm. whatnot, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, they give, they give a lot of babies that are born, they give them a vitamin K shot, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure that they, their, their blood does right, mm -hmm. you know, inside there. Some people's got a problem with blood clotting and some people have a problem with it not clotting. Right. Some people have yeah. a, I always felt like it would be better sort of the A, B test what you, you know, what you, what works for you and just see how you feel with it. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. two Everybody's or three. the same. Two or yeah. three. I read this book one time on the eat right for your blood type. I, I've heard, I haven't read that. I have heard that. Boy, though. it was, it, <clears throat> and it, and it what goes into your blood type. And I went and got my blood type tested and I, I wrote down on a piece of paper, everything I was supposed to eat, everything I wasn't supposed to eat. And if I stay right with that, which is hard, right? It feels, you feel wonderful. I think that's a great program. Yeah. Because it's yeah. evidently your blood type, but you don't see that book much. I, I've, I've heard about that. I've been wanting to read that too. That might be a good one to get hold of and, and learn some more. Well, I, it said that I was supposed to eat kale, and I never eat kale. Is that right? But yeah. boy, after I read that, I ate it. It was like my body said, finally, finally. How about that? Yeah. I guess it was some, something in the kale. Right. And oranges, I'm not supposed to eat oranges. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm not supposed to eat oranges because of the acid and the... Right. And uh, supposed to stay away from uh, uh, almond milk. <clears throat> Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that, I think there's something to that. Right. But it's hard to stay. You know, when you're with a family and the wife's cooking, you got four people in the <clears throat> right. family. You can't. You know, you just eat what's yeah, there, right. and then if right. you're still, eat, you know, eat a moon pie if you're still hungry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you ever eat stuff like that, moon pie? I do. Yeah. I. I. I can tell that I, you know, I, I could, I've got a little extra. On sometimes me. you just need a good moon pie, I don't agree. you? I agree, yeah. I sometimes mean, just for your emotions and, or whatever. Yeah. You know, we're going to emotionally eat, you know, might as well get a good one now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not going to live forever, no matter, oh, no, no matter might what. Might as well enjoy it <clears throat> while you can, right? Are you, you, are you live back in Cleveland now or are you still in Uruguay? I, I do, yeah, we live here. We, when we moved here uh, to start the practice, um, I'm actually moved, moved as well. So mm -hmm. uh, we live off of Free Will Road over there. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, 
you're 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 glad to be back home, I guess. Oh, right? Cleveland's a great place. You know, it's a great place to raise kids. We raise our kids here, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just it's just got and it's not too big, it's not too small, but mm -hmm. it's got enough of everything you need and be close to big towns if you need to go to a big town. So. Could you live in Etowah if you had to? I could. I believe yeah, I could too. I could. That's a great little town. That's for sure. It really is. Yeah. Did you ever go to the theater there? They had that theater. I, I did not. I, I didn't yeah. either. I, yeah. I always wanted to, but I just never did. Right. They had all the um, sur uh, surplus places and antique places yeah, up the there. Sundry, and, the sundry and, stores. Yes. Yes. I went there several times. Boy, so. you can get whatever yeah. you want cheap, can't you? Yes, you can. It's yeah. just piles of. It. They, you right. know, they moved down the road. I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. bigger than. And they had a great restaurant up there. Was it Farmhouse? I think it was a farmhouse. Farmhouse, yeah. yeah. It yeah. used to be owned by the same people on, Her on Harrison Pike. Oh, is that right? The same people? It used to be yeah. the same. I don't think it's the same now, but... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that farmhouse is... It's a great place to eat. It is. I ate there many times while I was up there, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, you had to park across the street, didn't you? In the, I, gr yes, in the grass right. yard. Yeah. yeah. I built the funeral home up there. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I have... Uh, Two two rental houses up there. Yeah. They're never vacant. Somebody moves yeah. out, their sister moves back. It moves in. It's yeah. just because people that live there want to live there. Right. They don't. Right. They're not going to. They don't want to leave. Yeah. Good place. That's a mm -hmm. good place. I I could definitely see myself doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The streets are real wide. You ever notice that? They're really. I guess I hadn't thought about it, but I guess they're because it used to be. Uh, that used to be. Uh, my understanding is it used to be more populated than Cleveland. At one time, uh -huh. because of the rail, the I can railroad, see that. right? Because that was the main stop. Right. That's why all those streets are named Cincinnati, Ohio, and right. and, and they're wide and they got sidewalks. Yeah. And it's just they don't have much industry because it's and they're not next. Well, at one time that was the main thoroughfare, you know, four eleven highway. Right. Right. Correct. There was no interstate. Yeah. So, yeah. Did you ever go back home through Benton much? Uh, not usually. I just usually hit Delano and Boar Road and yeah. come back that way. Yeah. I like traveling through through towns like that, don't right. you? I, I do. I do. It's, it's now my wife doesn't so much, but uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's um, it's neat to see the history and see the people, mm -hmm. and you know they're dependent on people like us to come through and mm -hmm. visitors to mm -hmm. you know help support mm -hmm. them too. So they've got another. They've got a real nice. Uh, Nice grocery store there now. I guess it's the Publix or Food City or okay. something. Yeah. And they got a couple of nice Mexican restaurants, of course. <laughs> right. You know, Everybody's uh, got, boy, Mexican restaurants, they can make it when nobody else can. I, I think so, yeah. I wonder why that is. They just work harder or got cheaper help or I, cheaper I no food. Or I Everybody don't know. seems to like Mexican food. You can always find something you can eat there, you know, I guess. Yeah. So. You read you read over, to, I guess you read Zoe for a lot, don't you? Cause they're I'd like to eat there I, several times, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, the McGowan's are great people. Boy, they know, are. So, aren't they? Yeah, they they've done a good job. Yeah, they. Uh, I've had him here. Oh yeah, yeah, and Scott. Yeah, yeah Scott yeah. with the, the Mouse Creek Pharmacy guy, Jason. Okay. They're they're good friends. Yeah. Good. Jason goes there every morning about six o'clock. Is that right? Yeah, they're, yeah. they're packed, in, but when I drive by there in the mornings, that's oh yeah, busy, they'll busy. be parked in your spark. Yeah, spots. they might. They might be. <laughs> You're, is, see, Tom cries across the street, or is it Bebo? He used to be. I think did he, did he retire? Or, or he retired, but yeah. Bebo took over. You ever see Bebo? Somebody just moved in about maybe three months ago across the, the street. I think they do uh, appraising title. Yeah, right? big guy. Yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, loud, okay. kind of loud. I haven't <laughs> met him, but uh, uh, I have seen somebody. Yeah, yeah as Bebo. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> what else is new in the? Uh, in the chiropractic business, do you think it's gonna, they're gonna, do you think they'll ever have robots that can adjust you or does it take the human touch? I think I'm, I'm we're gonna be well protected on that. We don't have to worry about a, a robot taking our job. So uh, there's just no way a robot could do that, you know, what we do. Is it, can you feel a muscle and say, hey, you're, 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 you're tight, it's tight here? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We don't really have to x-ray people, but I almost always do because mm -hmm. we need to know for sure there's not other stuff going on in there too and to make sure they're safe and it gives us an idea which, but I, I can just about tell you 
put my hands on somebody, I, I can tell them what the problem is real quick because I've done it so long. You know? See, I, there's no way I could do that. I'd have no clue. But you yeah. can just say, oh, there, he's tight right yeah. here. Absolutely, yeah. I've done it so long, thousands of times, that it just becomes second nature. But you can, yeah. now, sometimes they'll, they'll push on your, on your feet. Right. What are they seeing? So you talking about leg length discrepancy, or they're they're picking up your feet and looking at them, and uh, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or push it, pushing on them, and I don't know what 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 yeah. is it. Well, so w one technique that's taught in chiropractic school is subconsciously when a nerve has got pressure on it in the lower back, even up in the neck, your your body like if we were to hold your feet up like this, mm -hmm. one leg will be shorter than the other, and then you can pull them up straight up like this, and it may switch. This now is shorter. And so that those all mean different things. So, like when you when you want, let's say your right leg is short in a prone position or face down, then we pull it up, and now your left leg is short. That means you have a right SI joint on the left on the right hand side. Is is something is involved with that? Mm -hmm. And we'll turn you over on your back, and then um, look at you in a different way, and it may be the total opposite way. And have people turn their heads and do different things. You'll see the legs change. You can tell if it's an atlas, which is the top bone, or an axis, which is the second bone. You can tell a lot by leg length discrepancy too. How do they know all that? That's a good question. A lot of research has gone into that to know for sure. So they would have to take yeah. a skeleton in the beginning and seeing what what affects what linkage affects. Yeah. Because at that point it's not it's not nerves. It's just the linkage. Well, it actually relates back to the nervous system. So mm -hmm. subconsciously, you're if, if if a bone has gone a certain way, hitting a nerve. To, to balance your body out, you know, we'll we'll even go up there and do a fake adjustment sometimes, like in the neck. Mm -hmm. Like if I see that this leg is off, uh, turn your head to the right and do sort of a fake adjustment, go back down and see if it changed it, and you'll know right where to go, you know, to, so you can get it perfect mm. on there. Boy, there's a lot to do, isn't there? There's a lot to do, right. You ever have, you ever take somebody's head and pull it, pull it like? Some of that, well, no. Yeah, they, I see them I, on the internet. Yeah, they'll do they'll that. put a, a, a towel, towel right. and pull. Right. We are not taught that in school, uh -huh. um, and I, that's a new thing, I think. And I think it's, I would be very cautious having that done, you know, because it just looks like, just knowing what I know and done this so mm -hmm. long, chiropractic can be aggressive and can be, you know, non-aggressive. Mm -hmm. But that's super aggressive, you know, and you may get into some trouble, you know, uh, yeah. if you if they don't know what they're doing, you know. So that's why we always we do an exam, we do X-rays. We want to make sure we know exactly what's going on. That's how that's how we're taught in school to do it the right mm -hmm. way. And then we found too that people get outside of that, you know, and they start doing things that are a little bit different, mm -hmm. and kind of on the odd, odd side. Mm -hmm. And that's where people get in trouble, you know, if they're going to get in trouble. It's going to a chiropractor is doing things that not scientifically proven, not research based, not that sort of thing. Um, and you'd want to you'd want to learn it through a through a one week class or something through some instructions that they've proven to be wor working. Right. You got you got to make sure you do it right the right way, you know. So um and that that's why I, I just I, that's why we just take I always have taken precautions to make sure mm -hmm. that we do it the right way. I've I've caught things on x-ray and I said, "Hey, I can't touch you, you know. You need to go here to the mercy room." Mm -hmm. Um we had a lady one time um I took her x-rays and she was in a hurry and you know, you're right before lunch and she was in a lot of pain. You're thinking, oh, I'll just adjust her really quick. Mm -hmm. I said, no, let, we better x-ray and x-ray and there's something was not right on that x-ray. And I just said, I, why don't you come back after lunch and let, let's, let's, let's look at it. And then she came back after lunch and I, I said, I can't touch you and sent her to the, um, I sent her to the, had an MRI ordered mm -hmm. for her. And they called me as soon as they, as they got a hold of her and said, hey, we went, we sent her straight to the mercy room because she had a tumor wrapped around her spinal cord, you know, and, and that x-ray, if I hadn't done that, you know, who knows, you know, what, what I meant, could have yeah. missed, you know, so, uh, and they, they thanked me, you know, thank you for, you know, yeah. they went in there surgically and removed it. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of things. It was wrapping around stuff. Yeah, around her yeah. spinal, not even the bone, just inside, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it had been developing mm -hmm. and it just finally got to the point where she's so, so miserable. So it's, it's important to make sure you diagnose it, you know, yeah. correctly. You know? That's why you have to, so you don't do a, a an x-ray on people all the time, just like when the first visit right. or, right. you know, maybe once every two years or something. So it's yeah. not ever, that's why the, if you just come in on a Thursday, you can just get have a quick adjustment. Right, correct. <clears throat>
Very Why good. would some people, do, a quick adjustment, is the idea that over time you won't have to do that adjustment, but that your body will start compensating? Well, yeah, eventually you don't need it as much. You know, once you, like if you had a program, we put you on a, you know, a couple month program mm -hmm. and then eventually you come in once a month or once whenever just to make sure everything's working mm -hmm. good. Kind of a maintenance level. You know, Remember so. the old days when people would just, you'd see somebody and they'd have one heel higher than the other. Yeah. They, they just hadn't been adjusted enough, I guess, right? Well, sometimes, now sometimes there are anatomical variances yeah. that they have to. You know, but besides but, that, there right. are probably some people that were adjusting that way. Yeah, yeah. I went to, a, on riding my bike, I went to this real, supposedly the world's greatest bicycle fitter. He oh, really? takes your He takes your body and you ride for like 30 minutes and he puts these things on your feet. And, right. And uh, he was supposed to be the best. Okay. And I drove five and a half hours to see him. Because wow. I thought, well, maybe it's, that's what's wrong with me. Right, <laughs> you know, right. Because I'm... And uh, he said that I was a, that my feet wanted wanted to work off of the the toes, that I wanted to be a like this no, instead guy. of a instead yeah. of a like that. I got that you. I, my, he said my he said your feet want to dance, and they were slightly like this, and he puts the slightest shims under one pedal. He said, I want to make sure that your knees go exactly right. And I think that guy knew what he was doing. That sounds like a pretty smart, smart fellow. Because he really, uh, and uh, another thing he told me, I said, I said, you know, sometimes when I ride real hard, I feel like I got to throw up. I got you. And he said, he said, your, uh, your stomach has a, a, a sphincter in it that when it gets hungry, it opens up. Right starving for food and and your stomach acids work their back, way back up and that's what makes you want to throw yeah. up i said well, what i do he said mix about half a coke in your water bottle yeah interesting and so i started doing that right. and and so it makes it he said we're tricking your stomach into thinking that there's still food available i got you interesting yeah <laughs> Body's an amazing thing, that's for sure. <laughs> Have you are you are you shocked all the time about how the body can just heal itself? If Absolutely, it's... you know, it's an amazing creation, and and it's just amazing how it works, you know, and and that's what we do in, in chiropractic care is we believe the the body that made the body, the power that made the body can heal the body, you know, and some people take that extreme, you know, and get into new age stuff mm -hmm. and stuff, yeah. but. You know, but but ultimately, the way God designed our body to heal itself, you know, we're supposed to be able to live 120 years according to the way it's written. Yeah, you but, know, I've 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 read that. I wonder uh, what we'd have to do to live to be 120. I mean, what would we would we have to be the you know the Daniel diet? You've heard of the Daniel right. diet. Was would we do that, or what is it that we're doing? Or should we be drinking out of glass glass bottles instead of plastic? bottles you ever wonder about that Plastic well I, bottles? you know i have you know um that's a great uh great question there's just so many things that could you know there's environmental things out there and there's stressors in our lives that we you know um it i wish we had the, all the right answers to know what could we make it 120 but um i don't i don't i think you, you definitely as far as that daniel diet is a great program but you do have to have some protein to Make your body work. What too, was so. what was the Daniel diet? What was his? It was all vegetables and water, from what I understand. You know, they and yeah. the rest and the the king's men or the kings uh, mm -hmm. were were drinking wine and meat. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, so really the the healthy balance is, is. I wonder if that was what God just had Daniel doing, or if it was for the Bible. Because I I was a vegetarian for like fifteen years. Is that right? Okay, yeah. And it about killed me. Yeah, that's tough. It it just right. my body's got to have meat. My daughter did that, and and she actually went vegan, went real strict. I was and, pretty strict. Yeah, and so she finally has, has incorporated chicken back in, and so it's just important to, because protein is the healer of your body. You know, as far as not the healer, but it's the, it's the rebuilding and repair of, mm -hmm. of your muscles and things. So especially if you're riding bikes and stuff, you're going to wear down those muscles. You got to have some protein back in there to make sure. Well, that was what it was. I was thinking, man, I'm getting, I'm just getting tired. I don't have the energy right. and. And uh, so I just started, 
And I don't believe chicken does it. I believe you got to mm-hmm. have red meat. I really believe yeah, that. I think all that I, imbalance I works. A, yeah. a real difference. Right. Um, what about that? Uh, you ever study those uh, guys that do the uh, carnivore diet? What's his name? Baker. I know who you're talking about. There yeah. was a major league baseball um, manager that did that. Uh-huh. You know. And there wasn't an ounce of fat on them because they it, swear by it. Yeah, but I just don't think that's the right way to go either. You know, I mean, that's my opinion. I just, you know, God gave us all these fruits and vegetables to eat. You know, so and mm-hmm. there's a reason behind that. You know, but but in losing a weight short term, that might not be a bad problem. You know, to because you can yeah. get some weight off pretty quick. You know, but then that. again, maybe you should just go back to that guy I was reading about with it's eat right for your blood type. I felt right. the best. Right. And, but then you'd have to be, with yeah. a family, you'd have to be your own cook. Right. At the mates, so sometimes social part is part of that problem, right. you know. So you got to eat with a bunch of friends and stuff, and they're, you know. They eat birthday you know. cake. You got to right. eat a birthday cake. Right. You don't want to offend them. You know, yeah. So. And boy, if I eat a birthday cake, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Do yeah. you ever do that? Uh, I just that can't. commits a lot of sugar. I just can't sure. handle it. Right. Just a bite is, is, is a key. Um, well, um I was trying to remember his name, but uh, oh, Kobe Bryant. That's what they would mm. do. He would say, "Just have a bite, just a just a taste, mm-hmm. and not indulge." And that's how he was such a good athlete. You know, just in moderation. Like well, that. I don't. When I if I I, I go overboard to, to on whatever right. it is, easy to do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can eat a box of uh, vanilla wafers just about at one setting. Yeah, that crumble cookies is one of our week. My wife and I uh, over there by uh, over here. Off, Paul Huff. Oh, yeah. Those things are really good. They make them with real sugar, too, don't they? Oh, they don't sure. have that fruit. Oh, yeah, high fruit. Real that high fructose corn syrup, I can nearly smell it. Yeah. I just can't. I can, t- I can right. taste it. But that stuff that's made with real sugar, you know, you can't eat that much of it when it's real, real stuff. Yeah, it, it, you have to, moderation, that goes back to mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. just be careful not to overindulge, for sure. You know, I was riding bikes with these guys one time, this older guy that was was with us and we went way out to web store way up makes in a uh polk county reliance and uh and everybody went in there and got those uh um uh, you know uh all the energy bars right they were doing yeah. all this stuff and these guys were 25 years old and so this guy he was 62 at the time he gets a, he got a, uh, two Little Debbies and a Coke. Is that right? <laughs> and I said, hey, I said, you're going to eat that? He said, yeah, man, I got to have some energy. He just ran right with the rest of them just like it was that? nothing, just right. up in the lead. Yeah. But my point is he knew what his body needed. His body right. needed a Coke at that time. Right. Yeah, sometimes you just got to have that. You you're know, o- sure you know, it's right. okay if you're if you're needing it. Right. That other stuff probably had some crazy stuff in it anyway. I, yeah, I, yeah, they do. I they mean, really do. You know, if you get to reading a granola bar on the, on the, if you read the what's in it, you think, man, I better, I'll just have a little Debbie. Right. I could see that. <laughs> well, those energy drinks, they're pretty scary. You know, oh, the, yeah. uh, there's, I'll, I'll be in line. I, I go and um, uh, I've seen people get four and five of those Red Bulls at a time. I, I took, I drank a Red Bull one time and I thought my head was over here and my body was over here. And I, that's just too much caffeine. <clears throat> and, and your heart will race. And, you know. I took, I used to drink those monster drinks and I'd right. chase them with a, I'd drink, take BC powders and chase them with a monster drink. And, uh, yeah, spent five days in the hospital, four nights, five I can days. Imagine. <laughs> right, and that yeah. was. I asked the doctor afterward. I said, "Do you think it was that?" And he said, "I don't." He said, "He said, I have no clue." It went away in five in really? five days. It was completely clear. How about that? But it was. But it had to be that. I'm sure right? it, was, it had to yeah. be that. Boy, it wasn't. That's a lot. It wasn't a milkshake. Right. You've done better to have a milkshake. Yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've had a patient just the other day that um, I think he, he was taking something like that, and, and um, he got put in the hospital and uh, about killed him because there's bleeding and stuff inside. And well, those things so, are horrible. Yeah. They're horrible. Oh, I don't know true. how they can keep them on the market. Somebody's got some money to influence some people, I guess. And they'll so, and they'll yeah. they'll convince you it's better than a Dr Pepper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd. 
my son used to do that right for for a game. He was down with those things, and, mm. and uh, yeah, so that's not a good. Because now they got the big cans. Those monster right. drinks, they were this big. <clears throat> it's a lot of caffeine for sure. Yeah, and I think they got some other stuff in it too. This right. just doesn't seem right. <clears throat> but and those Red Bulls to me taste like a cough drop that's been liquefied. Right. They don't even taste right. good to me. Right. They, it's the energy. That's what they're, they're yeah. getting. That. Uh, Natural, not natural high, but a, I guess a legal high, you know, yeah, from right, the caffeine right, you know, from there. Right. So, um, what else do we, you, you ever think to yourself, well, chiropractic can't help your ears, but it might help the, the stuff that, that feeds your ears or your nervous system that it's sort of, you don't know what it has to, what all it might right. help. You don't. Right? So we, we don't go say, you know, we're going to cure an ear infection mm -hmm. or cure a, a, a toe or whatnot, but mm -hmm. we're going to make your body work and hopefully it'll take care of whatever it is you have a problem with. Right. You know? So it's like me taking um, the, going to that, having an allergy, a stopped up head before I went, got a chiropractor or right. something. My, right. You're just allowing the body, <clears throat> just like we're talking about diet, you're just giving it the you're letting it, you're letting it do its thing. If it, right. if it can't do it, I don't know how else to do it. Do you? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the key is making your body work the way it's designed to work. You, know, you think we can. got more medicines than we had, say, well, you know, we could say in the, you know, in the early seventies, but that's probably about the same time as, but, but maybe in the thirties, do you think there's more medicines now than we had then ton more that's a crazy amount more and that's part of one reason i was i was looking at some stuff before we came about like where where do we fit in america as far as healthcare goes and we spend more per capita person um on health care and then they were they were just ranking this and out of the 10 industrialized countries we're last in overall mm. health you know so it's, it's like why is that well, that could be, you know, it could be processed foods. It could be nutrition. It could be we're drugged up too much, you know. Um, I may have this wrong, and I probably do, but I think that my understanding was that that maybe, maybe, maybe 50 years ago, the FDA had 750 ingredients uh, approved by the FDA. And... And now there's like 10,000 ingredients approved, but Europe still has 750. That wouldn't surprise me. I don't, something yeah, something right, like that. Right. <clears throat> I wonder if some things are even classified as what we classified as, you know, what, what is the basic definition of food? Right, yeah. I, that's a great question. You know, yeah, I mean, edible is uh, one thing, everything. Right. Edible, right? Some will kill you, some won't, right? Well, there's there's a lot of processes that go through to get a food to the market, you know, and then they have to have it so that it's not going to have a disease in it, so they mm -hmm. they'll kill it off mm -hmm. with other things, mm -hmm. you know, and and then there's you know pesticides and all kinds of things too. So um, that probably relates some back to that 120 years we're trying to live, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, I, I I mean, I have patients come in sometimes. And they had this laundry list of medicine. They're like, how do you even keep up with this? I would get confused on yeah, how to take this, that, then here, there. Yeah. And then one, one, will, one medicine will affect the symptom. Then you got to take a pill to take, cover that symptom. Then mm -hmm. you got to take a pill to cover that symptom. And then you, you know, and it just, and your body can't handle all that, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and if we could get off some drugs, that'd be real helpful. It's got to be, it's got to be making it more complicated than it is, I just feel like. Right. I guess, you know, if we believe in the Bible and it says the body can live to be 120 years, I'm all for that. So what is it we're not doing? Well, I, I, I just think that we got to, we got to not, we're a lazy country. You know, we got to get up, start exercising. Mm -hmm. um, our, part of our mental attitude is, you know, uh, my dad always told me attitude is everything, you know. So if you have a rotten attitude, you just going to be, things are going to be rotten, you know, for you. So you got to have the right attitude. Um, you got to have the right nutrition. You got to have the right sleep, um, and you got to make sure your body is moving and, and get it working like it should be. So there, there's a lot to that, you know. There's some genetics in there too, you know. I mean, there's obviously people um, have inherited some things that they can't get over, but 
Or, or maybe they inherited habits. Ah, there's a lot. Of, ah, absolutely a lot of truth. You know, that. Yeah. People you know, ask me all the time, but he's, he's my lower back cane. I heard because my, my parents have a, have a lower back. And I thought, well, that's not necessarily, that's not true. It's not you in know. the equation yeah. here. And, you know, I was talking about uh, cooking for a family that, you know, if you're in a family, odds are y'all are the same bud type. Well, there's, there, yeah, right. you know, that's correct. Your mom it, and dad's the same, so. So know. that's maybe not that hard. It'd right. be, you'd be real close to maybe, yeah. maybe you got some of the traits. Right. You ever wonder why humans had different blood types? That's always been a I, mystery You know, I, that is, I've never really thought about that, but why can't we all have the same one? We could all, you know, but, yeah. but God had a reason for it, you know, so. Yeah, they uh, said uh, type O is the oldest uh, blood type, and mine is AB, and it's like, it's a rarer one. Yeah, it's like five so, percent, but right. it's the newest blood type. Right. And uh, but I just wonder what, why there's differences in blood types. That doesn't make yeah. sense to me. I, I could understand. I I don't have the answer for that. But I bet uh, nobody yeah, does. Nobody, yeah. Um, but it's good that you you can help A's and B's <laughs> with yours you know, if you ever donate. You know. You know, if you look at the Bible, what were they doing differently? They were eating meat. They were eating yeah. honey. They were right. eating milk, wine, and water. Right. Yeah. You don't, and lentils. Right. You can't name anything else in the Bible they were eating. Right. Right. Except Daniel ate some fruits. But right. you could argue that's because he was in the lion's den and they weren't going to give him the good meat. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it has to be a lot to do with, you know, processing and stuff <clears throat> of foods and how they have to get it to the shelf to market it, you know, um, pesticides, <clears throat> herbicides, things like that. I mean, the organic, I, don't, I can't wish I could say that I always ate organic, but I don't. <clears throat> it's just sometimes more expensive and it's hard to always get those. But, um, you know, there, there's a lot of truth to that, though. The healthier you can eat, the bigger and better you're going to be. You know, one example I had is uh, I went down to Abundant Living and they had, uh, sometimes I just get bored and I'll go into a place and just walk around and since I'm make a phone call and I feel like I got to buy something because I went in there. So right. I just bought a lemon. Right. And so, you know, so with my tea, I just, you know, where well, you cut up half a lemon and put it in there. Right. You could put that whole half a lemon in there. It's really it strong. was strong. Right. I mean, it took like a, just a little, like there used to be a yeah. wedge. It, right. Remember going to Shoney's and you, they'd give you one lemon? Right, right. And that was enough you could take right. the lemon. Now you say, I'll have lemon, and they'll bring you a half a bowl of sliced lemon. Right. You put them all in there, and you can't even tell it's in there. There's got to be something off. Well, they probably processed them down or genetically modified or something, it, you know. It so, can't even be yeah. a lemon. It's got to right. be something different. But now Abundant Living quit selling them. Really? I don't okay. know where you get them. I figure if I order them online, by the time I get here, if it lasts just a week, it can't be a... Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Yeah. I just know it seems it's rational, doesn't right. it? Right. Yeah. So what else is going on? Well, uh, yes, we uh, got our three kids. We got three kids, and we're just trying to get them. We got them in different places in the world now, and uh, my kid... One of one kid in school still. He's at Tennessee Tech, plays ball up there. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, my wife and I, we've been married 30, 31 years as well. So, um, yeah. Is, how old's the oldest? 27. She's up in Nashville. Is mm -hmm. up there. Uh, What's she doing there? She works uh, for the housing department. That, uh, that I don't know if you heard of Lincoln Tech. That's a, uh, uh, a diesel mechanic school. Um, or mechanical school used to be uh don't tell me don't tell me uh lincoln tech is on gallatin drive and it used to be called uh nashville auto diesel college a very I, very well could be right uh, <laughs> she does the housing for them up there yeah yeah you know, because so, uh, they have to come in from all over the place yeah they have like two older motels that they use for housing i think right on the galaxy it may be yeah i know there's some apartments they use now too mm -hmm. but uh yeah you'd think a diesel mechanic would be a she like living in nashville i think she does uh she's young and and kind of in that you know mm -hmm. can do that a little better than mm -hmm. me but uh, 
Um, she lives on the west side over there in Bell, Bellevue. Bell, 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 Bell Mead, I think. Yeah, I think that's what it's mm -hmm. called. So, yeah, she's got to move next weekend. I think her lease is up. She's moving into a house or renting a house or something. You're going to go so. help her move? I'm going to wait till afterwards. She's got some people that'll help oh. her. So. <laughs> <laughs> she must be pretty good looking. Yeah. Well, she does all right. Maybe that's so. why she's got help, right? <laughs> Maybe that's it. So, did she go to school up there? Uh, she went to MTSU. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty much. So that was like forty minutes from Nashville. So. Right. Right. So that's how yeah. she got connected with that job, I guess. Well, that through Nashville and and just living up there, I think. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And we have one that's in Houston, Texas. She played for she played softball for ETSU. She went to the mm -hmm. other, and then she got a uh, uh, she does a got her master's at Oklahoma Baptist University, mm -hmm. and that fed her into this Houston program mm -hmm. that she's down there. So she's working at a church down there and does communication, telecommunications and stuff with them. She drive back or fly back when she comes oh, back? Oh, fly. Yeah. That's a long, that's she like leave. 16 hour, I think, or 14 to 16 hour drive. Probably, you, yeah. Yeah. Is she cut, she, she fly to Dallas or Houston, or Houston, I guess? Yeah, Houston. They have two, they have a hobby and a international, mm. Bush International. So mm. um, it depends on mm. what the best deal is, which one she goes to. I went to Tucson here about three weeks ago and we stopped in Dallas at yeah. the layover. Boy, it's busy there. It? it is. You think yeah. it's busier than Atlanta airport? Nothing's busier than that place. Atlanta is, is, I, I think it's ranked number one, the busiest. Atlanta? Right. Yeah. Well, it seemed like, of course, when you're there, you're captive. You just see what you're right. walking around to see. Right. I didn't realize that when you went through the the gate and they checked you all out, that when you had a layover, they don't check you again. Right, you don't. Because right. I guess there's nowhere you're you can the, buy something. Right. Yeah, you can't buy any any bad things. I'll and, bet you she could just about, from the time she gets leaves her house to get here that that she's just a few hours short of driving. Sometimes it feels that way. Yeah, sometimes it feels that way. Because uh, the time you park and... and Leave your house. Yeah. Because you got to get... From there to here is probably one layover, maybe. Or maybe uh, not. Yeah, well, you got to go to Atlanta. Pretty much you have to go to Atlanta yeah. or Nashville. Yeah. Sometimes you can fly and pay a little extra and go to Chattanooga, too. Yeah. But, uh, but still, when you yeah. do that... Uh, you know, well, some th I don't think... Uh, I think... I think Knoxville has a from Knoxville to Houston. Oh, does it? But I, see, I then know. you'd have to be there two hours ahead, right? And then drive up there, and, and that's two. three hours yeah. to get one hour to get there, and two hours. So it, it's it's yeah. not much difference. Probably sometimes, sa sometimes probably safer to fly. Well, it just doesn't wear you out as much either. You yeah, because you know driving, but. Um, yeah, and plus you don't want a daughter fall yeah, asleep at ours, the wheel, right? Yeah. Unless you had unless two or three of them in the car or something to help yeah. out, but, mm. but yeah. Well, anything else we need to cover? You stay busy. You got all the business you can handle. Well, we can always use more, but uh, you know, uh, sometimes <laughs> it's that way. But um, we're promoting these new things with the soft wave and the neuropathy, and that's real exciting to see. You know, done chiropractic care for so long, and it. It's definitely beneficial, and we see a lot of great results. But we've taken on this other level stuff. It's pretty exciting to see those people. Do you shoot anything into the bottom of the feet or puncture it with for that neuropathy? How's that? So we with that we use actually use that soft wave that shocking system uh, and put it on the back of their legs and bottom of both their feet, and it, it causes their stem cells to react to heal that area. And that's actually how we're getting part of how we're getting so much great results with it. You're causing it to move, I guess. Well, kind of, you know, so we're kind of, you know, as our, our stem cells are, are in our body, they're like little soldiers that, like, if you cut yourself or mm -hmm. sprain your ankle, they know how to go heal mm -hmm. that area. But as we get older, they, they become a little more dormant, and especially in neuropathy, when it's dying off, dying off, dying off, well, we got to wake those back up, you know, and make them. So it's so actually, some people come in dead feet, we'll wake them up, and they start hurting again, but that's a good thing because yeah. they're, they're feeling it, and then it calms down after that, but... And neuropathy is, is just, I'm so excited to be able to offer that to people because it's such a debilitating. Oh, know, this, it's, it's their awful. mind and their mu everything else is okay. They just can't hardly walk. Yeah, and at night they can't sleep because it's on fire. I've had people hold their feet up to electro to air conditioners at night, all right on the air conditioner mm. just to keep it from, just so they can sleep. Are the stem cells getting dormant or do they die off? They don't so much die off, they just become more dormant. You know, it's, it's slower healing. So you can slower. wake them up. 
Yep. Say, hey, we need yeah, your help here. Yeah. Get up here and send some blood to the feet here. Right. Because the bottom of their feet get numb with neuropathy. Right. They do. They don't yeah. know what they're... They don't even know what they're walking on. They'll step on things. And I had a, I had an uncle, was 50, he died at 58 years old with a massive heart attack, mm. real diabet, a diabetic. But he would be bleeding across the floor and barefoot and didn't even know mm. it because it's, he had such neuropathy so bad, you know, inside there. And that was a long time ago, but... Uh, you know, I noticed older men was not raise their... And their, shuffle? Their, they'll be, they won't yeah. raise their feet. They'll just right. sort of... Yeah. I, it, is that a... A form of neuropathy, you reckon? Well, it could be. It could be because they're they're just trying to be balanced, being careful. You know, yeah, they, they don't can't know. Feel, they don't know where they're going. You know, and people driving a car. Think about that. I can't figure out where the brake yeah. is. You know, or the gas pedal. You know, so that's pretty scary too mm. to see that. Mm. So would would could they just get out and start jogging to wake up these? No, nope. no, because. You got to work on the inside part, and that's what we're able to accomplish. Is is we are able to through our system wake up those ner- wake up those nerves mm-hmm. to make them work. So you got to go from the inside out. Jogging really is more. I mean, yeah, it helps with circulation and stuff like that overall, but it's not going to affect those little bitty nerve fibers that were in the feet that are the nerves front of the neuropathy. And and maybe it started from uh, not enough movement. Well, that's part of that, but but but. And it's not just diabetic related too. We'll have people come in, it's called idiopathic neuropathy, which means we have no idea where it came from. Mm-hmm. But we're able to treat it the same way. So so something is causing the nerve, whether it's diabetic or we have some patients that are chemotherapy patients mm-hmm. uh, that have killed off their nerves because of that as well, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the chemotherapy did. Mm-hmm. So all of that can regenerate if we, if we affect it the right way in there. I wonder if there's any places where people do a lot more walking and jogging and running at what the level of neuropathy they have compared to us. That would be a good study to see, no. you know. I don't know, like, I know in California they do a lot of that, you know, more yep. walking and riding, mm-hmm. or, you mm-hmm. know, but it may be, that'd be interesting mm-hmm. to see that. Mm-hmm. But if you did, if you saw a study, you wouldn't know who's paying for it or who's, <laughs> That's true. who's leaning. Sometimes they, uh-huh. they are biased. So. Do you do you think it experience has taught you as much as the school, or do oh, you think more. school? Right. I mean, that's a good ba- school is a good foundation. You got to learn all that. But when you get out there and start getting your hands on people and working with people and stuff, mm-hmm. that's where you really mm-hmm. learn your you know learn how to do it. One last thing: I sleep on my side, and I put my knee up here, and I think that's what throws my hips out. It could be, right. and I can't sleep any other way because yeah. I sleep that way. We just so want to be balanced. Habit. Yeah, right. You want to be balanced. Just think of your spine being straight, so your pillow's thick enough, you know, so your head's not bowing in. Yeah, and, my head goes yeah. like that because yeah. my pillow's too thick. Yeah, so all of that means that just think of it. When you're on your side, try to think of your spine being straight. You have to be. break those habits. Though. Right. Yep, big part of it. I wonder if you'd now that who what it, what culture is it that sleeps on a hard board? I don't know. Is that J- Japan? Yeah. It could be. I, I really don't know. Because I could do that every now and then. Sometimes when people are Will that help straighten you out? Well, sometimes I have people in so much bad pain, that's all they can do is just sleep on the floor, you know, uh, because the bed's too soft or or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, You think the human body was made to sleep on a flat surface or? Well, you know, that's a great question. I, I know a lot of our beds are too soft, you know, so I, I think more firm is going to help you long term. But those soft beds feel good at first when you first yeah. get in them, but but over time they start sagging and your body goes with it. So yeah. I, I firmer is typically better long term. Well, if you slip on a hard surface, you wouldn't sleep on your side as much. That's true. You would right. tend to right. stay on your back. or the back's I the can't sleep way. on my stomach. That's good. That's the worst Because I can't. Uh, Breathe. Right. That's the worst way to go is the mm-hmm. stomach. What about a pillow? I guess, well, the pillow is just to keep you straight. Well, that's the, that's the way. You know, if, if you're on your side, make sure it's thick enough that your head doesn't bow in or up. Mm-hmm. And then on your back, you want to make sure you have that curve inside there. So mm-hmm. some people sleep with too many pillows and their heads rocked up like that, and that can cause quite a problems too. I guess you should sleep like you're in a coffin. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. I got a cousin that sleeps like, hey, if you is walked that, in, you'd think he was dead. How about that? Well... <laughs> You have to poke him a little, make sure he's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you looking forward to next week? I am. Yeah, we've got a lot, a lot of things ready to go, and, and I think we're going to have a real good week. And then, um, yeah, it's supposed to be pretty next week. 
I hadn't heard. I, I meant to look at that. And it was cooler it's today. Supposed to be so. mid seventies next week. Oh, that's perfect. Time change is what next Saturday. It is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this coming Saturday after Halloween. I sleep you know, better so. in that that time. In this upcoming time. Yeah, for some so. reason my my clocks my sleeping clock where right. sleeps better during that for some yeah. reason. Well, it's, there's more dark light, the more dark yeah. hours, you know. And so. on jobs, people don't expect as much of you because it gets dark early. Oh, that's good. Because if it, it stays light longer, they think the you subs are supposed to be out there too because, <laughs> you know, which is ridiculous because yeah. they, they've got a life too. Right. Yeah. All right, Mark. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for coming. In. Yeah, thanks for having me.